Good to be in God's house this morning. It's good to see everybody here. You know, we got uh, so much to be thankful for, for what God, God does for us. Things we take for granted. Yes. You know, we we serve a great God. Yes, we do, man. A loving, caring God loves us, yes. cares for each and every one of us. You know, we, we got a God that wants us to do right. Yes. He's made a way for each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. You know, uh, He didn't come for the righteous. Because yeah. each and every one of us has sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Yes. There's none of us was righteous or are righteous. You know, if we are, it's through and by Him yes, that we have. He's made a way for each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. Amen. God came down, was manifested in the flesh. You know what? He took our place <laughs> upon that old cross. Yes, you know what? He, he bore our shame upon that cross for each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. Not because you're good. Not because you deserve it. He did it because He loves us. Yes. Amen. Yes. And you know what? We got a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. A great opportunity. But you know what? Not everybody will heed to it. Yeah. Not everybody will. Mm -hmm. People say, believes in their mind. You know what? Uh, I've been baptized. Mm -hmm. You know what? I've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I've received the Holy Ghost. I speak in tongues. Yeah. And they claim and they think that's all they are to it. Well, there's more to it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Them's just your steps. Mm -hmm. Them's the keys. Mm -hmm. And there's more to it. There's more for us. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we got to go on. And we got to walk in holiness. We got to live that life. Mm -hmm. We can't just have it on the outward side, but it's mm -hmm. got to be on the inside. Yes. Amen. There's a lot of people put the outward side on, but the inside they're like ravaging wolves, is what Christ said. Amen. He said they take the tombs and they uh, whitewash them and make them look beautiful on the outside, but inside they're full of dead men bones. Amen. And that's just an illustration to to us. Amen. If we got it on the outside, our inside is full of dead bones. There's no life. There's no breath. Amen. It takes the Spirit of God. And if any man to be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. Yeah. All things are passed away. He said, behold, all things become new. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. They've got to be a change. And that change is a process in steps. Yeah. they got to be a continued walk in the Lord. we got to realize, you know what? What I once was, I could no longer be. Yeah. Amen? <laughs> maybe what this one here does, maybe we need to do better. Amen. There's always a growing process. I don't care what the preacher says. I don't care what that one there lives or what that friend thinks. All that matters to me is what the Word of God says. Amen. And if the Word says it's wrong, it's wrong. We we gotta we gotta step up to it. We gotta be a we gotta have a humble spirit about ourselves. Amen. We gotta be humble enough to receive the Word of God. Amen. To realize it's not about me no more. Amen. It's not, it's not this guy's will. But it's his will. Amen. This old fleshly will will lead you astray. Yeah. Praise God. <coughs> Amen. Now let's uh, turn our uh, Bibles to uh, 1 John. 1 John. In chapter 2. First John chapter 2, where we're going to be at. By the help of the Lord, I'm going to try to get through this chapter. You know, the This here was written to the church. 
The Word of God is written, all the Word of God is written to the church. God's believers. And here, there had been a falling away, a big split in the church. A lot of people has left, got uprooted. Some's got their feelings hurt, probably. Some's mad. Some of the myth tree. Some just full of pride. There was false teachers that came in. <coughs> they became a murmuring amongst, amongst the people. And here's the letter is written to the church. And there's four things here I, I want to talk about. And I'm, we're going to get in through all of them throughout here. The first uh, thing was written that was written that says it was to add to their joy. That's in uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 4. It says, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Amen. And it says, guard, against, guard them against sin. So we need to be guard against sin. That's in chapter 2, verse 1. It says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. Sin not. So we need to guard against sin. The third one was to warn them against false teachers. That's in chapter 2, verse 26. It says, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Beware of them. And the fourth thing is to strengthen their faith. Chapter 5, verse 13. And it says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. That we need to have our faith strengthened. And you know what? Our faith is not just a believing faith. This is a foundation. Your faith is a foundation. Amen. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. That's what, that's what faith really is. It's not just to believe in, the, in existence. Amen. But it needs to be our foundation. It's the word of God. Amen. And uh, let's get into the word here in chapter 2. And I want you to keep in your mind the things that was going on in this church. We got a lot. There's a lot of uh, backbiting. There's a lot of hatred. People railing up on one another. So here the first verse says, My little children, be stand right I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the perpetuation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. You know what that advocate means to plead one's case, to go before. You know what we can think about with the Holy Ghost, it's to lead us into more truth. Amen. And perpetuation, that's talking about an atonement. That's a sacrifice. Amen. Jesus Christ is their sacrifice. Amen. He presented himself holy and spotless. Amen. We got a high priest now. Not like of old with the high priest that went into the holies of holies once a year to offer the blood of bulls and goats. Them could never take away your sins. But we have a high priest now. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. And when he went and took our place, you know what? That veil was rent in twain. That we now have access through him. That's the blood atonement that we have. Amen. Because of him. But let's look at here what it's talking about in the first verse there. The first verse condemns sin. Amen. A lot of people think this just justifies it. He's talking, he says, my little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. Yes. Amen. How are you going to sin not? People tell us all the time, well, you can't be sinless. Hey, we can if we strive for it. Amen. Praise God. It's talking about how we walk with God. Amen. Our walk with God can help us to not sin in these things. 
And let's go over to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5. And verse 16. Galatians 5 and 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Walking in the Spirit of God, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you go on and read the rest of these, the works of the flesh down through here is all these ungodly things. There's what you're walking in when you're walking in your own self. Self-will. Amen. I believe the scripture says something that they're uh, without the spirit. Amen. They're self-will. We need to walk in that spirit. How do you walk in that spirit? You got you to gotta be led by the spirit. Amen. You got to stay in your word. You got to meditate upon your word. You got to stay in prayer. Amen. You're in communion with God. But when you get into communion and get this mind full of all these ungodly things out here, you're being led by the flesh. Amen. These things, what you put in here, is what you want to become. You fill your mind with the things of this world more than what you feed your mind. The things of God, that's what you're going to be. Amen. Galatians chapter 6. Verse 7 through 9. says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Whatever you're doing, you're going to reap it. Yeah. Amen. If you're living after the flesh, you're going to reap that stuff. Amen. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit, shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Amen. If we walk in the Spirit, we shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. There's no place for giving up. Amen. We got to keep striving. We got to walk in the spirit. Amen. We got to give ourselves total and holy to God. Amen. This is not just their only time for church that we come into the, in the building here. This is our worship place that we praise God. It's been dedicated and set apart for God. Amen. But our walk with God is out here in the world. Amen. That's where your worship begins. Yeah. Is out there. Amen. It's not that we just go out here and we're free to live any old life we want. Don't get me wrong. We all have jobs. We all got duties we got to do. We all got families. But you know what? God needs to be number one in our life. Everybody is so busy doing everything in this world. And they want to justify that it's all right. Amen. And and they're doing okay. Hey, we got to put God first. Hey, I know we got to work to make a living. Amen. But you know what? We still need to make an effort to serve God. Amen. Let's go over to uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans 8. Romans 8, chapter, verse 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Praise mm -hmm. God. You know what condemnation is? If you break it down, really, it's sin. Mm -hmm. Amen? So now, it, it, we're, we don't have no sin if we're in Christ Jesus? Maybe. 
There's a there's a catch there. If you walk not after the flesh and after the spirit. See, we got to walk after the spirit. A lot of people wants to take that and they want to use it to justify themselves. See, there's no more condemnation in me because I'm in Christ. But it's where you're walking. Amen. It's how you're living your life. If you're walking in the spirit, you're, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's the word of God. It says there in the rest of Romans 8 there that you know what? Those that are in the flesh cannot please God. Cannot. So if you're walking in that flesh, you cannot please God. It don't matter how hard you try, no matter what you're doing, you cannot please God. Whosoever is a friend of the world is an enemy against God. Amen. Praise God. But he said we can walk in the spirit. Amen. Amen. We can. Let's go over to uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. Yes. Exactly right, brother. Amen. Second um, Peter in chapter one, starting in verse five, read five through ten. He says, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. Remember, I said your faith was a foundation. Virtue. And to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Amen. You look at your virtue. It's morals. Goodness. What kind of morals does people have today? You look at the lifestyle I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about the church. We're supposed to be called the church. The world lives like the world is supposed to. Sinners live like sinners. Amen. Wise people get so upset when a sinner acts like a sinner. That's the way they're supposed to live. But where the problem draw comes into that is when the people that calls themselves Christians that names themselves as that name, not that they are, but they are called living like ungodliness. There's where the problem is. Amen. And so we need to have good morals. We need to have standards that we live by. You know, God sets a standard. He told him, he said, you set a, a hedge around this mountain that no one would cross by it. The boundary was set in order. He said, even if an animal or anyone crossed this boundary, they should be killed. God has a boundary for you and I. Amen. And if we cross that boundary, we'll die that second death. That's the death that we're talking about. That second death is that lake of fire. And he says the knowledge. 
You know, a lot of people has a lot of knowledge out here. There's a lot of smart people. But we need to have the knowledge, the word of God, the wisdom of God. Amen. Turn your book, turn the Bible over to uh, James. James chapter 3. James 3, verse 14 through 18. So let's look and see what the uh, wisdom here is that the Word of God is talking about. But if you have bitter, envying, and strife in your hearts, glory not. And lie not against the truth. Well, I'm telling you what. Doesn't that just set it right there? Bitter and envy and strife. If you have that, don't glory. Don't lie. Not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. So where did this kind of lifestyle come from? The devil. Oh, but Brother Manor, this is just the way the world is today. Everybody does this. Well, uh, you know what? They can continue to do it, but that's their choice. Right. But here's what God says. All that stuff, Hollywood, it's all devilish. Yeah, yeah. All that filth and ungodliness that people's putting in their mind, devilish. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is what? Confusion. And every evil work. Every evil work. There is where it comes from. It comes from the devil. Amen. So remember the church here was in a split? Yeah. We're going to get ready to get into some of this. But you know what? Think on that. Where did all that come from? The devil. It comes from confusion. Mm -hmm. It comes from murmuring. It comes from backbiting. It comes from gossiping. Amen. All these things is devilish. But the wisdom, here's their wisdom. That is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. Full of mercy, praise God, and good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace, praise God, of them that make peace. Amen. This is pure. God's word is pure. God's people are to be pure. Amen. Gentle. Meekness. Long suffering. We need to be like these things. What is long suffering? Forgiveness. Amen. Isn't God long suffering toward us? Not willing that any of us perish? Hey, let's lose the mindset that God is this old man with a white hair and a big stick up there in heaven Amen. waiting to smack you over the head because you mess up. That's the farthest thing from the truth. He's long-suffering towards us all. Amen? So we can get better. So we can encourage one another in the faith that we got a hope in eternal life. Back in uh, First Peter or Second Peter here, Second Peter, I believe we left off at um, verse seven. With all the things here we need to add to, add to our faith, our virtue, the virtue, knowledge, knowledge, temperance, and the temperance, patience, and the patience, godliness. Godliness, brotherly kindness, and the brotherly kindness, charity. For if, here it is, for if, if these things be in you 
and abound. They got to grow. Okay, you can't just have them in you. you they got to be in you and abound. They got to grow. They make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is what they'll do for you. They'll make you bear fruit. Good fruit. Amen. But. Here's a but. But. He that lacketh these things. Lack what? All these things right here we just read. If you lack these things. Is blind. And cannot see afar off. And hath forgotten. Forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. This ain't talking about the sinner out here. It's talking about God's people. If you have forgotten these things, you've been you've forgotten that you've been purged from your old sin. If you don't have these abounding in your life. Amen. You ain't going to get these abounding in your life sitting in the recliner watching that filth off from Hollywood. You ain't going to get it sitting in the recliner listening to that ungodly music. You put these filth and things in your mind and you ain't going to get it looking on the internet of what everybody else has got to say. You ain't going to get it by being on the gossip telephone talking about one another. You're going to get it out of the Word of God. Amen. you got to get on your knees in prayer. you got to ask God for a humbling spirit. This takes a work. You know why? Because this fleshly mind is at war. This flesh and the spirit is contrary one to another. This fleshly man wants to do the lustful things. This fleshly man wants to do the earthly things. But the spiritual man wants to do the things that are pure, peaceable, gentle, kindness. See, there's when you could know the difference and start acknowledging what's going on. When it's not pure and peaceable, it's not of God, it's confusion. Amen? And we need to label it and get away from it. Because it is so easy to be entrapped in this ungodliness. Amen? He says, Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence. To make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things. You should never fall. Yeah. Never fall. Never fall. Praise God. Ain't that good news? Good news. If you do these things. You will never fall. <clears throat> That's the hope that we have. Yeah. That's the strength in our faith. To strengthen us. If we do these things, that's our walk that he condemned. My little children, sin not. That's how we walk this walk. That's how we talk this talk. To apply these virtues in our life. Amen? Amen. Let's go back to 1 John in chapter 2. See, that's the first part of that first verse. He says, my little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. I give you very few little scriptures here, just a little, on how not to be sinning. But now let's go on. He says, and if any man sin, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the perpetuation for our sins. He's our sacrifice. And he's not just for ours only, but he's for the whole world. He died for each and every one of us. That blood is our sin covering. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Amen. And let me tell you something. He said, well, I got out of it. Well, come on now. Wait a minute. Hey, I know we all fail. We all sin. We all come short of the glory of God. 
But brother, you don't need to be out here walking every day sinning, sinning, sinning. If you are, you need to quit it. You've got to come out from among them. You've got to be Amen. separate. Amen? And you know what? We do have an advocate. But you know what? You ain't got one over and over and over and over and over. Amen. they got to be a change. Amen. To die out to sin, to repent of sin, means you turn from your sin. You turn from it. You don't continue to live in it. People say, oh, Lord, you know, I'm just human. We all sin every day. We all do this stuff. Okay. Guess what? That latitude is going to send people right straight to hell. Amen. Come on, man. We got a way. Amen. Hey, God's made a way for us. Hey, if you come down with a broken heart and a contrite spirit because you know you sinned against God, you've done something that you're not, not to be doing, maybe you got in a conversation you shouldn't have been in, you can make things right. Amen. Amen. God says if you offend one of the brothers, but you go to Him first. Amen. And you apologize to Him, then you come and give your gift to the Lord. God, that's our advocate. Amen? That's our, that's our perpetuation for our sins. But you know what? It can't continue on over and over. They've got to be a change. That's what will happen to the church. There was some bickering going on. That's why they had a split. Amen? God's people are to not be divided. God is love. Amen? Amen? Let's read verses 3 through 6. And hereby we do know that we know him. If, if, if we keep his commandments. We know him. If we keep his commandments. He that saith I know him. And keepeth not his commandments. Is a liar. Amen. Now, this is not Brother Maynard's word. This is God's word. Amen. Yeah. So, if I say I know him and I don't keep his commandments, You're that makes me a liar, don't it? Yeah. Amen. And the truth is not in me. What is the truth? Jesus Christ is the Amen. truth. Amen. So, that means I'm a lion. Jesus is not in me, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. But whosoever keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God. Perfected. Yeah. Amen. Not just there. Perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him himself also so to walk even as he walked. Uh-oh. Oh, but ain't nobody can walk as Christ. Well... He's telling us to walk after him. Mm -hmm. Amen. How did he walk? Oh. That's right. He walked totally, didn't he? Amen. Turn back to Ephesians chapter 5. Where are Ephesians? Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5. Verses 1 through 2. Yes. What we need before the enemy means eyes to Right. 
That's right. So it matters how everybody else sees it. It matters what he sees. Yes. What he says we're doing wrong and what he says we're doing right. That's right. What we think or what everybody else thinks don't matter. It's what he knows to be the truth. That's right. Amen. That's right. And how does he see us? By the word. If you think you have eternal life, search the scriptures. In them is life. Amen. In them is life. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 2. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. So we need to be followers of God. Amen. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. And have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. So we've got to walk in love as God has walked in love. Amen. Think about when Christ came here. How he was despised. How he was rejected. How he was hated. He railed upon him. They spit on him. They mocked him. Talked about him, and he opened not his mouth. Amen. Opened not his mouth. Amen. There was no gall found in his mouth. There was no backbiting. He walked in love. Why? Because he had a mission to do. Yes, Children, we got a mission to do. Also, we may not. We may be so busy, caught up in the things of this world, we forget sometimes. But we have a mission also. God has commissioned each and every one of us. Amen. We need to be out here as lights in the world. Amen. Trying to compel people to come to the house of God. We need to draw people. We need to help people. Amen. As Christ has helped. All the time he walked upon this earth, his one mission was to head towards that cross. He had to die. He had to lay his life down. That was the mission. But on the way on that mission, he had a journey and a purpose for everything. You think it was by accident that he was there at the well? It's a woman? No. It says, if you catch that in the first verse there, it says he must go to Samaria. Why? He, there was a woman there at the well. Amen. There was a, a one. There was a funeral procession coming. He had to be there. Amen. There was a man with blinded eyes. There's a man that was lame. Don't you see all this out here in the world? We have people out here that's got blinded eyes they can't see. We got people that's got ears that they can't hear. Amen. And I'm talking spiritual things. I'm talking about sinners that's lost because their eyes are blinded. Their heart is hardened. Amen. That's our job to be out here witnessing to them. We got a mission. We need to walk in love as Christ has loved us. And how much did he love us? He went all the way to the end for you and I. All the way. All the way. He laid his life down. No greater love than this that a man lay his life down for a friend. And he said, you are my friends. Amen. Amen. We need to have that same kind of love Amen. and compassion for one another. Not just for each other that you love, that we're good to, for the people that despitefully use you. We need to pray for them. Amen? We need to forgive people. We need to not be railing back upon people who rails on us. Amen? In your walk with God, you've got to be very, very careful, too. Because I've seen a lot of people try to force this upon people. And you can't do it. That's right. If the door of utterance is not open for you to just say something, it wouldn't do you any good to go out here and try to witness to somebody if God hadn't put that person in front of you to witness to. Right. So if God didn't put them there, or you just go someplace and try to say, well, I'm going to bring this to them, I'm going to tell them. You know, I've seen a lot of young people over the years yeah. make that mistake. They mess up because they try to take it to people when God didn't open the door. Then they would wind up getting hurt and then run them back. That's right. Now that's the reason you have to be careful what you do. That's right. Amen. Greatest witness that you can do, the way you live. Yeah. Amen. People Amen. watches 
how you live. Sure do. That's your greatest witness how you win people to the Lord is just by how you live in your life. First Peter chapter three. First Peter three, verse eight. says, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but counterwise blessing, knowing that you, ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. You know what railing there means? Not railing for railing. It means slander. Slander. Let's just break that down. That's gossip. Simple terms. Backbody. Busybodies. That's, that's returning railing for railing. He says, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil mm -hmm. and his lips that they speak no gall. Mm -hmm. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and eschew it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Yeah. And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? Who can harm you? Amen? But, and if you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Don't be troubled. No. Don't be in fear. Greater is he that is in you Amen. than he that is in the world. If you suffer for righteousness sake, great is he. Amen. <clears throat> but we got to suffer. We cannot return that evil back or you're not suffering. Amen. Answer back not a fool, at least thou become one, according to the scriptures. Amen. I'm not calling nobody a fool. I'm just quoting you the word of God. We don't have to go and act like that and say, well, the Bible said not for me not to answer you fools back. That's the wrong attitude. Amen. That's the wrong attitude. We got to have, we got to be pure. We got to be peaceable. We got to be gentleness. Amen. Because God is love. It's so easy to get in this mindset and rail back. This fleshly man wants to. That's his nature. But we got to overcome that. We've got to walk in that spirit. We got to be prayed up, ready to go. Amen. I know we can say we don't really know what we'll face. I know that. You know what? But by the help of God, we can do all things. Amen. With his help. Amen. We need God. I know what this fleshly man would do, but I know greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Amen. And I know if I'm not following after the example of David's footsteps that he was at home and not where he should have been. I know what he did. Amen. That caused him to fall. I know that example. I need to be where I'm supposed to be. Amen. At home in my word. In, the, in prayer, in meditation, amen, thinking about the love of God, and then I'm able to overcome anything amen. that is thrown at me, amen. 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 Praise God. All right, let's go um, to Philippians chapter 2. Let's just finish up about our walk there and we'll move on to the next step here. Philippians chapter 2. We'll read the first five verses. It says, if, there's that big word again, if. There's the four ifs in this first verse here. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ 
If any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that you may be like-minded. Amen. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Nothing. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than himself. Think about the other one more than yourself. Amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon the form of a servant who was made in the likeness of man. Praise God. Amen. Took a form of man. Took upon no reputation upon himself. Amen. But become a servant. We're talking about the King of Kings. Yes. Amen. Uh, the Lord of Lords. Mm -hmm. The God of all gods. Because an idol is nothing once you really learn the love of God. They're nothing. They're, they're non-existing. They're made up. But let me tell you about the real God. The true God. The one and only God that they are. He made himself a servant. Mm -hmm. What do you think we are to do? Make ourselves servants. Yeah. Amen. We're servants one to another. Praise God. Walking in love. Putting on the mind of Christ. See, it's so easy to get into the worldly way of thinking of what church is. It's just all a bunch of tradition. But the mind of Christ has a totally new outlook. You know what? We need to have up on that mind. Christ, we need to be servants of one of another. Deny yourself, amen. Take up the cross and follow after Him. Maybe somebody might not be living just the perfect way. Maybe they might have something a little a smart aleck comment to you. Pray for them, overlook them, try to overcome and not rail back to them. These is hard things, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Amen. This is real. This is life. Mm -hmm. Amen. But God will reward you for overcoming. You know what? That's how you suffer persecution. Happy are you that suffer persecution. Amen. Let's go to verse 7 and 8, chapter 2 of 1 John. 1 John, chapter 2. Verses 7 and 8. Brethren, I write no new commandment. Huh. I don't write nothing new. Amen. No new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Verse 8 says again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past. And the true light now shine. Alright. Uh, the new commandment. The old commandment. Is to love one another. Amen. Love is the fulfilling of the law. Let's. Uh, 1 John chapter 3. And verse 11. Turn over to chapter 3. And look at verse 11. For this is the message. Huh. Here's the message. The message that you have heard from the beginning that we should love one another. Amen. There's our message. Love one another. Turn to the book of John chapter 15. John 15 verse 10. John 15, verse 10 through 14. He said, if, there's that word, if, if ye keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, 
even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy, my joy, might remain in you Amen. and that your joy might be full. Amen. There's your joy. It's keeping His commandments. Amen. Amen. That joy is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. This is my commandment that ye love one another. What's His commandment? Love one another as I have loved you. Uh-oh. That ain't just as love somebody as, as they're loving you. Uh oh. Hey, that's loving one another as Christ has loved you. How much did He love us? How much did He really love us? Think about it now. How much did God love you? He went all the way for you. Amen. If you was the only one upon this earth, He said, I'll go. I'll come to Him. He came, He left His glory. God the Father, the Spirit, came down, manifested in the flesh. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Praise God. That's how much He loved us. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if if ye do whatsoever I command you, you are my friends. Amen. If you keep my commandments. Amen. Let's go to 1 John chapter 4. Verse 7. 7 through 11. 1 John 4, verse 7 through 11. Said his joy. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's his grace. That's right. His grace, his favor is upon us. That's right. Amen. He says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. Amen. For God is love. Amen. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Here in His love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the perpetuation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we are also to love one another, praise God. Hey, man. Oh, listen, honey, I've been around so long. I've been around in churches and I've had them standing around me in a circle, backbiting, pointing their fingers, hollering, screaming at one another, standing right in the sanctuary. But let me tell you something. God is love. Amen. We, we can't act like that and be, be God's children. Amen. And I'm not condemning nobody into hell. I'm telling you that we got something better for us. Amen. We got to love one another. We got to get in this word and be followers of God. Amen. We got to have the mindset of God. And you know what? That's not a one time thing. That's a continually continual act. Amen. That's something we got to work on every single day. And you know what? It's even deeper than that. Amen. In reality. Because you can be so blessed and filled in the spirit one minute and the very next minute you could have the life sucked out of you. But honey, we got to be overcomers. Amen. We got to have that mindset of Christ with love filled inside of us. Amen. Knowing the real reasons. Amen. It's not that I only speak in tongues. It's not that I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, but it's that I got love inside of me. Amen. There's more. There's more. Acts 2.38 is not the only thing they are. That's the beginning of a step. Is it essential? You better believe it's essential. It's the only way. But that's not it. There's more for us. To walk in love. Amen. And that takes a walk. That's something.
something you can't fake. You can fake the clothing. You can fake the talk. You can fake the walk out here. But honey, let the bad stuff happen. And you'll see what's really inside of you. Then the trueness comes out. And there's where it will show. Honey, whatever is in you. Out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaketh. Amen. Amen. If there's bitterness, cursing, anger, wrath, strife, all these railings, we need to check ourselves. Amen. Why? It's not just so you don't go to hell. That's one re good reason. But it's because of the love of God. Amen. It's because I love Him. Amen. I want to have a mindset like He does. He came to fulfill the will. Amen. And we need to fulfill His will. Amen. That's in us. The love of God. I don't do it because I don't want to hurt Him no more. I love my wife. She's my best friend. I don't do things to her because I don't want to hurt her. I don't want her to feel pain. I don't want my God to feel no more pain. Am I a disgrace to Him still yet? Am I still causing Him pain? Am I still causing Him shame? Amen. When He hung between heaven and earth for you and I. Round upon Him. Stripped Him in nakedness. He becomes shame for you and for me. That's the love of God. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Let me have that mindset that I can have that love. Forgive them. Forgive them, Lord, when they backbite me. Forgive them when they talk about me. Forgive them when they laugh at me. Let me have the love of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I want, I want to change. I want to be better. Yes. I want people to know that was a man of God. Yeah. Amen. I want somebody to follow me down here. Why? Because I ain't got what he's got. Trying to get to. You don't have to have every word to answer to everybody out here. You don't have to go up and quote the Bible to them. You walk in love Amen. out here to them. They'll see it. And they'll see that. <laughs> Amen. They'll see you. How you live. How you conduct your life. How you talk. How you walk. You know. I'm out of time, man. Getting but you know what? God is so good. Yes, is. I want you to 